Today we are looking at the sermon that has the title which says when is the end of the world. Leo tutakuwa tunaangalia ujumbe chenye kichwa cha chenye kichwa kinachosema lini ni lini mwisho wa ulimwengu huu. Praise Jesus. Amen. We know uh, there are ends for many things but we can cl- classify uh, the three types of ending tunajua kuna miisho ya vitu vingi lakini tunaweza tukagawanya kwenye tukagawanya miisho aina tatu uh, the first thing na kitu cha kwanza there is an end for an individual kuna mwisho wa binafsi And then there is an end for the age for certain age. Lakini kuna mwisho wa msimu, msimu fulani. And then there is an end of the world, the end of the world. Lakini pia kuna mwisho wa ulimwengu. Praise Jesus. Amen. So explain I will explain it shortly. Nitaelezea kwa kifupi about the end of an individual. Kuhusu mwisho wa Binafsi. We know that uh, we have been given time to live here on earth. Tunajua kwamba tumepewa muda fulani wa kuishi hapa ulimwenguni. And at the time when we are in this earth there is one day that all of us will die. Na katika ulimwengu huu kuna siku moja sisi wote tutafariki. This is the end for an individual. Na huo ni mwisho wa binafsi. Praise Jesus. Amen. So the death is an end for an individual. Kwa hiyo kifo ni mwisho wa binafsi mtu mmoja binafsi but we thank God that for us who have Christ in our lives lakini tunamshukuru Mungu kwetu sisi ambao tuna Kristo ndani ya maisha yetu death won't be the end of us kifo haitakuwa mwisho wetu sisi praise Jesus Amen. and also there is an end for the certain age lakini pia kuna mwisho wa msimu fulani we know there have been a lot of ages for different things tunafahamu kwamba kumekuepo na misimu mingi sana na yenye vitu vingi pia for example kwa mfano uh, in past years there was analog age kwa mfano kwenye miaka ya nyuma hivi kulikuwa na msimu wa analogia whereby even the, the phones that we, we were using they were not even these smartphones kipindi kile hata simu tulizokuwa tunazitumia ilikuwa sio smartphone but that that age has come to an end lakini ule msimu sasa umepita we are in the digital age sasa hivi tuko kwenye kwenye msimu wa digitali praise jesus amen there was also a, a, there was an age whereby for us to get fire we were supposed to use stones to get fire kuna msimu pia ambapo zamani ili kupata moto ilikuwa tuna, tunatumia jiwe tunagonganisha mawe moto kitokea tuna tunachukua you have read uh, in history about the stone age right Mesoma katika historia kuhusu zama za mawe za kale. You have read about that, right? Mesoma hayo, si ndiye? But that age has come to an end. There is not the same age with, with, with this age. Lakini ule msimu sasa umepita, sio sawa na msimu huu tuliyonao sasa hivi. And now today we see the disciples asking Jesus. Na leo tunaona wanafunzi wanamuuliza Yesu. They are asking him about when will be the end of the world. Wanamuuliza Yesu ni lini mwisho wa ulimwengu? Praise Jesus. Amen. But then Jesus is giving them this uh, very important answer. Na wakati ule Yesu aliwapa jibu hili la muhimu sana. He explained about the start or the beginning of the end of the world. Alielezea kuhusu mwanzo wa mwisho wa ulimwengu. It's not yet the end but the beginning Ilikuwa of the end of the world sio mwisho lakini mwanzo wa mwisho wa ulimwengu praise jesus Amen. so he told these disciples kwa hiyo akawaambia hao wanafunzi wake because why did he want to explain to these disciples about all these things kwa nini aliwaelezea wanafunzi wake kuhusu haya mambo yote the bible says in verse 1 of Matthew 24 biblia inasema katika mstari wa kwanza wa kitabu cha mathayo sura ya 24 that When Jesus left the temple and he was walking away, his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its building. 
Anasema kwamba Yesu akaenda zake akatoka hekaluni wanafunzi wake wakamwendea ili kumwonyesha majengo ya hekalu. These buildings of the temple the, uh, the Bible says the temple was so good it was looking so good. Haya majengo ya hekalu Biblia iko inasema kwamba kipindi hicho hekalu ilikuwa ni nzuri sana. The temple was something that everyone wished to see like uh, there was even this saying that if you have not seen that temple you have not seen anything good. Yaani hekalu ilikuwa ni, ni sehemu ambayo kila mtu alikuwa anatamani kuona. Yaani kwamba kama hujaona hekalu ni sasa hujaona kitu kabisa. So that that's that's they, they they said okay Jesus now do you see how beautiful this temple is? Kwa hiyo wakamwambia waka Yesu sasa Yesu umeona hili hekalu jinsi ilivyo? Do you see how big it is? Umeona jinsi ilivyo kubwa? But then Jesus said all these things that you see. Lakini Yesu akatoa akawaambia vitu vyote hivyo mambo yote mnayoyaona I tell you not one stone here will be left on another everyone will be thrown down. Naambia kwamba hakuna jiwe litakalosalia juu ya jiwe ambalo halitabomoshwa. Praise Jesus. Amen. So now they they came to, to ask Jesus, ah, so when will, will these things happen? Kwa hiyo wakati ule wakaja wakamuuliza Yesu, sasa haya lini atatokea haya? When will be the end of the world? Ni lini itakuwa ni mwisho wa dunia? So Jesus started telling them, kwa Yesu akaanza kuambia about the beginning of the end of the age that was coming. That is coming. Kaambia kuhusu mwanzo wa mwisho wa ulimwengu ambao unakuja. He said that there will be the age of tribulation. Akaambia kwamba kutakwepo kuna msimu wa dhiki. Age of tribulation. Msimu wa dhiki. So Jesus is telling them that the end is not yet. Kwa Yesu akaambia kwamba mwisho bado haujafika, but I'll tell you the beginning or the start of this end of the age Lakin... of, of, of the world. Lakini nitawaambia mwanzo wa mwisho wa ulimwengu huu. So he is saying that one of the things that will show that the world is about to end will be that there will be a lot of people who will deceive you or who will try to mislead you. Kitu cha kwanza ambacho kitaonyesha kwamba huu ni mwanzo wa mwisho wa ulimwengu ni kwamba watakwepo watu watakaowadanganya. So Jesus said take heed that no one deceives you. Kwa hiyo Yesu akawaambia angalieni mtu asiwadanganye. Praise Jesus. Amen. So our, one, uh, our missionary on Sunday told us very important thing. On Sunday our missionary told us very important thing. A uh, missionary alituambia kitu cha muhimu sana that even nowadays even in churches hata siku hizi za leo kwenye makanisa there are people who are deceivers who, who like to, to mislead others kuna watu ambao wanajaribu kutudanganya wanatuongoza vibaya that because of the words that they speak they mislead other people they mislead other believers kwa sababu ya maneno wanayoongea wanawadanganya washirika wengi sana so our missionary told us that we should not talk other things apart from gospel kwa hiyo missionary akatuambia kwamba sisi tusiongee maneno mengine tofauti na injili. Because if we speak other words apart from the gospel, we will, di- we will divide people. Kwa sababu kama tukiongea maneno mengine tofauti na injili tutagawanya watu. Praise Jesus. Amen. So if we truly are the, the, the church of Christ, kama ni kweli kwa, kama ni kweli kanisa la Kristo, God is expecting to see that we do love each other. Mungu anatamani kuona sisi tunapendana sisi wote but also we speak blessings upon each other na pia tunaongea maneno ya baraka kwa kila mmoja and not deceive and, and not deceiving or speaking lie, lie, uh, lies about others na sio kwa na sio kuwadanganya wengine praise jesus Amen. so missionary told us like uh, how many people can, can can come to you and say ah do you know this person do you know this person he is like this way or he is like this way kwa hiyo missionary akasema kwamba unaweza kaokaona watu huu mtu fulani anakuja na kwambia unamwona huyu unamwona huyu huyu yuko hivi huyu yuko hivi these are not important words for the church haya sio maneno mazuri ndani ya kanisa praise jesus amen for these words will just bring uh, will just divide the church haya maneno yatagawanya kanisa will cause scars to many yatasababisha majeraha kwa watu wengi so jesus also told these uh, his disciples that take heed because there will be a lot of people who will come and deceive you 
Kwa Yesu akamwambia wanafunzi wake angalieni kwa sababu atakwepo watu atakao kuja na kuwadanganya wengi. Others will say that I'm the Messiah. Wengi wanatasema mimi ni Kristo. And people will try to believe them. Na watu na wengine watajaribu kumwamini. So we must be very careful about this age. Kwa hiyo lazima tu waangalifu sana katika msimu huu. And also Jesus was saying there will be wars in places and places. Lakini Yesu pia alisema kutakuwa kuna vita mahali mahali. But still do not fear. Lakini msiogope because that end is not yet. Kwa sababu ule mwisho bado. Praise Jesus. Amen. And then the nation will rise against nation. Lakini pia taifa litapigana na taifa. And the kingdom against the kingdom. Na ufalme kupigana na ufalme. All these things will happen. Ha, mambo yote hayo yatatokea. Not only that, na sio hayo tu. There will be tribulation. Kutakuwa kuna dhiki. People will try to kill you because of of my name. Watu watajaribu kuwaua kwa sababu ya jina langu. And also people will hate you. Lakini pia watu watakuchukia. Praise Jesus. Amen. Gospel, the gospel is good news. Injili ni habari njema. But do not expect that when you go to the field, lakini usitegemee kwamba ukienda shamba la Bwana, everyone will be just loving you because you have the good news. Kila mmoja ata, 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 do, not, do not think that everyone will love you because you have the good news. Usitegemee kwamba kila mmoja atakupenda kwa sababu nazo habari njema. Praise Jesus. Amen. Remember in the field Satan is there. Kumbuka kwenye shamba la Bwana shetani yupo. And he doesn't want us to go and evangelize to the field. Na hataki sisi tuende kwenye shamba la Bwana na kufanya uinjilisti. He doesn't want people to know about Christ. Hataki watu wafahamu kuhusu Kristo. So a lot of people will hate you because of the name of Jesus Christ. Kwa hiyo watu wengi sana watakuchukia kwa sababu ya jina la Yesu. But still Jesus is telling us that do not worry. Lakini hata hivi bado Yesu anatuambia kwamba msiogope. So also there will be famine. Lakini pia kutakuwa kuna njaa and also there will be earthquakes na matetemeko ya nchi. The things that we also see in in, in our days nowadays. Uh, vitu ambavyo tunaweza tukaviona hata kwenye siku zetu hizi za leo. There will be false prophets number 6. Watakwepo na manabii wa uongo namba 6. Who will be deceiving a lot of people? ambao atawadanganya watu wengi and also na pia because of the increase of wickedness the love of many will grow cold kwa sababu ya kuongezeka kwa maasi upendo wa wengi utapoa praise jesus amen so for us to endure all these things kwa si, kwa si, ili si tuweze kufahamu haya mambo to endure because the bible says the one who endures till the end will be saved so for us to endure these things kwa yeyote atakayevumilia haya mambo for us to endure now for us to endure these things kwa ili si tuweze kuvumilia we need power tunahitaji nguvu praise jesus amen we need power tunahitaji nguvu but which power do we need lakini nguvu gani tunahitaji we need the power of the holy spirit tunahitaji nguvu za roho mtakatifu praise jesus amen how na, how can can you endure until the end for all these things to happen to if you do not have power tunawezaje sisi kuvumilia haya mambo mpaka mwisho wa dunia kama hatuna nguvu so we need the power kwa hiyo tunahitaji nguvu praise jesus amen and the bible is also telling in number 7 the love of many will grow cold na Biblia pia inatuambia hapa namba saba kwamba upendo wa wengi utapoa. As a church we have to love each other, right? Kama kanisa tunapaswa kupendana sisi kwa sisi. And a lot of times uh, even our missionary has told us na mara nyingi sana hata missionary anatuambia we have to to be able to accept other people. Tunapaswa kuwa na uwezo wa kumpokea kila mtu. No matter how they are. Haijalishi yupoje. No matter how problems they have, how many problems they have. Haijalishi ana matatizo gani. Still we have to know that we have to accept that people. We have to transcend over them. Sisi tunahitaji kufahamu kwamba tunapaswa kumvuka yule mtu and then accept them the way they are. 
na kumpokea kama alivyo and then help them with the gospel na kumsaidia kwa injili so jesus is telling us about these signs of the end of the world kwa yesu anaelezea haya hizi ishara za mwisho wa ulimwengu but what was his main message lakini ujumbe wake mkuu ulikuwa ni nini his main message was in verse 14 ujumbe wake mkuu ulikuwa ni mstari wa 14 Can you please read in Swahili earlier? Mstari wa 14 kwa Kiswahili nitasoma Tena habari njema ya ufalme itahubiriwa katika ulimwengu wote kuwa ushuhuda kwa mataifa yote hapo ndipo ule mwisho utakapokuja Praise Jesus. Amen. So there won't be the end of the world there will, there will, there will not be the end of the world mwisho wa dunia hautakuja until the gospel of Christ is being preached to the end of the world mpaka hapo injili ya Kristo itakapokuwa imehubiriwa mpaka mwisho wa ulimwengu praise jesus amen so as a church kwa hiyo kama kanisa and as remnants na kama remnant and as adults na kama watu wazima there is god's will for us kuna mapenzi ya Mungu kwetu sisi praise jesus amen for us being born here in newland kwa sisi kuzaliwa hapa Newland there is God, there is God's absolute uh, plan for us kuna mpango kamilifu wa Mungu for us to be in Tanzania and not in USA sisi kuwepo hapa Tanzania na sio Marekani there is God's absolute plan kuna mpango kamilifu wa Mungu praise Jesus Amen. and what's that God's plan na hi, na hiyo mapenzi ya Mungu ni nini the world evangelization uingilishaji wa dunia world evangelization uingilishaji wa dunia A lot of people nowadays we see there are a lot of pastors out there Siku hizi tunaona kuna wachungaji wengi sana huko nje Praise Jesus Amen And for example for me kwa mfano mimi I want to become a pastor Nataka kuwa mchungaji But I have to ask myself napaswa kujiuliza why should i be a pastor kwa nini nataka kuwa mchungaji why am i not in the hospital right now treating some patients kwa nini sasa hivi sipo hospitalini na watibu labda wagonjo fulani there are a lot of pastors out there why should i also be a pastor kuna wachungaji wengi sana huko nje lakini kwa nini mimi nataka kuwa mchungaji praise jesus and also for us who wants to be disciples lakini pia sisi kuwa wanafunzi why should we be disciples of christ why kwa nini sisi tu wanafunzi wa kristo and also there are church leaders na pia kuna viongozi wa kanisa why should they be the church leaders kwa nini tuwe viongozi wa kanisa and for you remnant na kwenu nyie remnant why should you be a remnant in Africa Mission Church. Kwa nini ninyi mwe remnant hapo hapo Africa Mission Church? Praise Jesus. Amen. This is this is the question that we, sh- we should ask ourselves. Hayo ni maswali ambayo tunapaswa kujiuliza sisi wenyewe. We must remain in God's absolute will. Si tuna tunapaswa kubakia kwenye mpango kamilifu wa Mungu. I want to be a pastor nataka kuwa mchungaji because I want to fulfill God's absolute plan kwa sababu nataka kutimiza mpango kamilifu wa Mungu. What's God's absolute plan? Mpango kamilifu wa Mungu ni nini? World evangelization. Uingilishaji wa dunia. Because the Bible is saying, kwa sababu Biblia inasema, we should not worry about how the end of the age will be or how the end of the world will be. Hatupasi kuogopa kwamba mwisho wa ulimwengu utakuwaje. But the most important thing that we should hold as a covenant, kitu cha muhimu ambacho tunapaswa kukamata kama agano is doing world evangelization kufanya uingilishaji wa dunia praise jesus amen we should not stay quiet hatupaswi kunyamaza kimya if we have the covenant inside of us kama tunalo agano la mungu ndani yetu why can't we evangelize to people 
Kwa nini hatuwezi kufanya uinjilishaji wa dunia kwa watu? So as I said there are a lot of pastors out there. Kama nilivyosema kuna wachungaji wengi sana huko nje. But how many of they of them are they doing world evangelization? Lakini wako wangapi wanaofanya uinjilishaji wa dunia? There are a lot of kids out there. Kuna watoto wengi huko nje. But how many of them knows the absolute will of God? Lakini wako wangapi wanaofahamu mpango kamilifu wa Mungu? That the absolute will of God is world evangelization. How many of them knows Wanko about this? Mpango kamilifu wa Mungu ni uinjilishaji wa dunia. Wangapi wanajua huko nje? Praise Jesus. So Lord, let, let us always remember this. Kwa hiyo sisi kila siku tukumbuke hili. There is one of my friend, kuna rafiki yangu mmoja who really likes uh, about the theology of eschatology. Eschatology is the theology that talks about the the the, the end times. Kuna rafiki yangu mmoja anapenda anapenda theolojia ambayo inaelezea mambo ya ya mwisho wa dunia. He really likes that theology. Anapenda sana hiyo theolojia hiyo. Every time in the groups he just shares about you know eschatology there will be a lot of things in the end of the uh, before the end comes. Kila mara kwenye grupu anakuwa ana, 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 anatuma anatuma ujumbe kwamba unamnajua mwisho wa dunia kutatokea haya na haya kuna mambo haya yatatokea. But Jesus is telling us that we should not care more about these things. Lakini Yesu anatuambia kwamba sisi tusiangalie sana haya. Rather we should be concerned about world evangelization. Sisi tunapaswa kuhangaika tu na uinjilishaji wa dunia. Because this is God's absolute will. Kwa sababu huo ni mpango kamilifu wa Mungu. For the gospel to be heard by everyone. Ili injili iweze kusikiwa na kila mtu. And then the end will come. Na hapo mwisho ndipo utakapokuja. Praise Jesus. Amen. But then na, te, na tena But then This world evangelization na pia wao uinjilishaji wa dunia a lot of people are claiming to be doing world evangelization watu wengi wanajitangaza wana kwamba wanafanya uinjilishaji wa dunia even uh, in, in, in in star times there is uh, this channel called world evangelization channel hata kwenye kingamuzi cha star time kuna channel inaitwa uinjilishaji wa dunia channel praise jesus amen but then what kind of evangelization should be done lakini uinjilishaji wa dunia gani unafanyika hapo? We should do the correct evangelism. Tunahitaji kufanya inji uinjilisti sahihi. The correct evangelism. Uinjilisti sahihi. Praise Jesus. Amen. This correct evangelism hiyo hiyo uinjilisti sahihi will come about if someone knows the correct gospel. Itatokea kama Mtu anafahamu injili sahihi. And what is the correct gospel? Na injili sahihi ni nini? The correct gospel is Christ himself. Injili sahihi ni Kristo mwenyewe. Praise Jesus. Amen. We see that a lot of people out there tunaona watu wengi huko nje they claim to be doing world evangelization. Wanasema kwamba wanafanya uinjilishaji wa dunia. But lakini we know for sure tunafahamu kwa hakika that a human being binadamu there is a fundamental within a man kuna asili ya binadamu praise jesus Amen. and then There, are, there is the heart of man how the, the way he thinks he thoughts lakini pia kuna kuna moyo wa mwanadamu na kuna mawazo pia ndani ya mwanadamu praise jesus amen and then outside here na there are hapo nje other physical aspects of man kuna mambo mengi kuna mambo ya kimwili ya binadamu praise jesus amen but then out there when people are saying they are doing evangelization na huko nje watu wanavyosema kwamba wanafanya uinjilishaji wa dunia what are they trying to to solve wanajaribu kutatua nini physical problems of mankind matatizo ya kimwili ya mwanadamu or at least if they try they just go to help this person uh, to cure his mental problems na wakijaribu kuingia ndani kidogo wanajaribu kutibu matatizo yake ya kiakili but there have been no one 
or not many people who are looking at the fundamental problems of mankind lakini hakuna hata mmoja ambaye anajaribu kutafuta matatizo asili ya mwanadamu if we solve these physical problems of mankind kama tukitatua haya matatizo ya kimwili ya mwanadamu maybe someone comes to you and says labda mtu mtu anakuja kwako afa anasema i am sick ninaumwa i want to be healed nataka kuponywa i want you to do a miracle to me nahitaji unifanyie miujiza so that i can be healed ili niweze kupata uponyaji a lot of people are running to get miracles watu wengi sana wanakimbilia kupata miujiza but then okay they will get healed lakini kweli watapata uponyaji and then what happens after getting healed lakini nini kinatokea baada ya kupata uponyaji nothing hamna the devil will come to that person and he will disturb that person again yule shetani atarudi tena kwa huyo mtu alafu atamsumbua tena yule mtu or someone comes again and says i'm poor i need money Mwingine anakuja anasema ah mimi ni maskini nahitaji pesa. Pray for me so that I can get money. Niombe ili niweze kupata pesa. But is money the most important need to mankind? Lakini pesa ni kitu cha muhimu ambacho mwanadamu anahitaji? No. Hapana. There is something that a man needs. Kuna kitu ambacho mwanadamu anakihitaji. Praise Jesus. Amen. If these fundamental problems of mankind cannot be solved kama haya matatizo asili ya mwanadamu hayatatatuliwa by Christ himself na Kristo mwenyewe the devil will continue to hold the heart of this person shetani ataendelea kukamata moyo wa huyo mtu will continue to hold the, the, the thoughts of this person ataendelea kukamata mawazo ya huyo mtu and then he will continue to destroy even his body na ataendelea kuharibu hata mwili wake pia praise jesus Amen. so even the bible says kwa hiyo biblia inasema If the unclean spirits comes out from a person, kama roho chafu akitoka kwa mtu and goes away, na akaenda mbali huko to find rest, ana kuenda kutafuta mahali pa kupumzika. And if he doesn't find a, a place to rest, lakini asipopata mahali pa kupumzika, he will say okay, I will go back, I will go back to the place where I was before. Anasema oh, sawa, nitarudi mahali nilipotoka. If he finds that place clean, akikuta ile mahali pamesafishwa that means that place does not have the word of god hii inamaanisha kwamba hiyo sehemu hakuna neno la Mungu there is no christ in that place hakuna kristo kwenye hiyo sehemu the unclean spirit goes out there and calls more seven demons of his kind yule roho chafu anaondoka anakwenda na wachukua wenzake wengine saba wale waovu zaidi yake and comes to that person na wanakuja kwa yule mtu praise jesus amen so the solution that we need kwa hiyo suluhisho ambalo sisi tunalihitaji is the fundamental solution for mankind. Ni suluhisho la matatizo ya asili ya mwanadamu. Praise Jesus. Amen. And who is uh, what is this solution? Na 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 hilo suluhisho ni nini? Christ himself. Kristo mwenyewe. Praise Jesus. Amen. Christ who came Kristo ambaye alikuja as a true prophet kama nabii wa kweli to come and show the way. Aliyekuja akaonyesha njia for a man to meet with god again ya mwanadamu kukutana na mungu tena the one who came as a true priest aliyekuja kama kuhani wa kweli to solve the problem of sin to mankind kutatua matatizo ya dhambi ya mwanadamu praise jesus amen and the one who came as a true king na pia aliyekuja kama mfalme wa kweli to break the power of satan ili kuvunja nguvu za shetani praise jesus amen that solution is needed so that this man or this person can have the complete healing. Kwa hiyo hilo solution ndio linahitajika ili huyu mwanadamu aweze kuwa na uponyaji kamili. We need a spiritual solution. Tunahitaji suluhisho la kiroho. We do not need the physical solution. Hatuhitaji suluhisho la kimwili. If we get the spiritual solution, kama tukipata suluhisho la kiroho, then all our problems will be gone. Kwa hiyo matatizo yetu yote yataondoka. Praise Jesus. Amen. So when we go out there kwa tukienda huko nje is true that God's absolute will is world evangelization. Ni kweli kwamba mapenzi kamilifu ya Mungu ni uingilishaji wa dunia. But what kind of, a, of of gospel are we giving to the field? Lakini ni aina gani ya injili ambayo tunahubiri huko nje? We should only talk about Christ. Tunapaswa kuzungumza Kristo pekee. Praise Jesus. Amen. The one who said it is finished. Yeye yeah, aliyesema imekwisha. We do not need uh, prayers about getting rich and getting money. Hatuhitaji tena maombi kwa ajili ya kuwa matajiri na, kupa, na kupata pesa. If we get Christ we get all that physical aspects. Kama tukimpata Kristo basi tunakuwa tumepata vitu vyote vya kimwili. Praise Jesus. Amen. Do we believe so? Naamini hivyo. 
So let us get this physical uh, let, let us get this spiritual solution first. Kwanza tutafute kwanza huo solution la kiroho. Praise Jesus. Amen. So kwa hiyo let us have the correct gospel number one. Kwa hiyo namba moja sisi tuwe na injili kamili. If we have the correct gospel, kama tukiwa na injili kamili, who the gospel uh, the correct gospel who is Christ himself? Injili kamili ambayo ambayo ni Kristo mwenyewe, then we will have the correct prayers. Sasa tutakuwa na maombi kamili, maombi sahihi. What are the correct prayers? Maombi sahihi ni nini? The Bible has told us in uh, Philippians 4 Biblia imeshatuelezea kwenye kitabu cha Wafilipi sura ya 4 verse 6 up to 7 mpaka wa 7 Praise Jesus Amen We should not just concentrate on praying for physical things Sisi tusiweke umakini sana kwenye kuombea kuombea vitu vya kimwili If I told you that we need the power for us to endure all these tribulation Kama nimewaambia kwamba tunahitaji nguvu kwa ajili ya kuvumilia haya matatizo and again i told you that we need spiritual solution na pia nimewaambia kwamba tunahitaji suluhisho la kiroho then what should be our prayer kwa hiyo maombi yetu yatakuwa nini the feeling of the holy spirit ujazo wa roho mtakatifu praise jesus amen we get the feeling of the holy spirit tunapata ujazo wa roho mtakatifu then all the things comes to us sasa vitu vyote vitakuja kwetu because if we have the spirit of god within us kwa sababu kama tuna roho wa mungu ndani yetu we will not only have spiritual power hatutakuwa tu na nguvu za kiroho but we will also have physical power pia tutakuwa na nguvu za kimwili that means our bodies we will be healthy kwa hii inamaanisha kwamba miili yetu itakuwa na afya praise jesus amen but also we will have the wisdom power lakini pia tutakuwa na nguvu za kiekima and also we will have the financial power lakini pia tutakuwa na nguvu za kiuchumi and lastly we will have the, the, the power of getting disciples lakini pia tutakuwa na nguvu ya kukutana na wanafunzi praise jesus amen so the feeling of the holy spirit is the correct prayer for us to, to continue to pray for it times and times again and again kwa hiyo ujazo wa roho mtakatifu ni maombi sahihi ambayo sisi tunapaswa kuomba mara kwa mara praise jesus amen if the holy spirit is within us that means the kingdom of god is within us na kama Roho Mtakatifu yupo ndani yetu hii inamaanisha kwamba ufalme wa Mungu upo ndani yetu pia. So this is act 11. Kwa hiyo hiyo ni matendo ya mitume moja moja and this is act 13. Na hiyo ni matendo ya mitume moja mstari wa tatu. Praise Jesus. Amen. And then through the power that we get from the Holy Spirit, kwa hiyo kupitia nguvu ambayo tunapata tunapata kwa Roho Mtakatifu, now we we will be able to do the correct evangelism. Hasa sasa tutakuwa na uwezo wa kufanya uinjilisti sahihi. Praise Jesus. Amen. So let us remember, kwa hiyo tukumbuke, let us not just concentrate on the pain that we we get. Sisi tusiweke umakini sana kwenye maumivu ambayo tunayapata. Maybe because of Christ. Labda kwa sababu ya Kristo. Or maybe because we preach uh, maybe we, we, we tell people about the good news. Labda kwa sababu tunawaambia watu habari njema. Let us not concentrate on this. Sisi tusiweke umakini hapo. Praise Jesus. Amen. Let us put our concentration and our attention on the God's absolute will. Sisi tuweke umakini wetu na akili zetu zote kwenye mapenzi kamilifu ya Mungu. Which is world evangelization. Ambayo ni uinjilishaji wa dunia. So we have to go to the to the field and evangelize. Kwa hiyo tunapaswa kwenda kwenye shamba la Bwana na kufanya uinjilisti. But then we, sh- we should not just evangelize. La sio kufanya uinjilisti tu. Correct gospel. Injili sahihi. Praise Jesus. Amen. How do we do it? Tunafanyaje? by the help of the holy spirit kwa msaada wa roho mtakatifu amen amen lastly mwisho i will like the conclusion here utaandika hitimisho hapa let us go and read again sisi tuende na kusoma tena verse 14 Matayo 24 mstari wa 14 and let us continue to meditate 24 hours na tuendelee kuleta fakari masaa 24 about world evangelization kuhusu uinjilishaji wa dunia let us meditate tutafakari to why did Jesus emphasize on the gospel being preached to everyone 
kwamba kwa nini Yesu anasisitiza kwamba injili ihubiriwe kwa kila mmoja praise jesus Amen. so as you read verse 14 kwa hiyo ukisoma mstari wa 14 please continue to meditate tafadhali endelea kutafakari and continue to meditate and, and understand which what is the correct gospel na uendelee kutafakari na kugundua kwamba injili kamili ni ipi praise jesus amen and also for each one of us who is here na kwetu sisi ambao tuko hapa all of us we are the church sisi wote ni kanisa we are the body of christ sisi ni mwili wa kristo now let us ask ourselves as i said kwa hiyo tujiulize sisi wenyewe kama nilivyosema why should i become a pastor kwa nini napaswa kuwa mchungaji? Why should I become a church leader? Kwa nini napaswa kuwa kiongozi wa kanisa? Why should I be a remnant? Kwa nini mimi niwe remnant? To fulfill God's absolute will. Kutimiza mapenzi kamilifu ya Mungu. Praise Jesus. Amen. And then, na pia, the last one, mwisho kabisa. Let us always have this assurance. Tuwe na uhakika wa haya mambo. That though there will be these problems happening to my life, kwamba ingawa kutakuwa na matatizo haya yatatokea kwenye maisha yangu I should not worry sipaswi kuogopa I just have to hold on to one thing napaswa kukamata kitu, kitu kimoja tu that God is with me kwamba Mungu yupo pamoja na mimi praise Jesus amen and also I must have this assurance na pia napaswa kuwa na uhakika huo about Emmanuel kuhusu Emmanuel God with us Mungu pamoja nasi. And that in all things na kwamba kwenye kila kila kitu God works with us. Mungu anafanya kazi pamoja na sisi to give us all the good things. Kutupatia vitu vitu vyema. That is oneness. Hicho ni hiyo ni oneness. Though there might be tribulation ingawa kutakuwepo kuna dhiki there will be this famine kutakuwa kuna njaa there will be people hating us watu watatuchukia in all things katika vitu vyote god works with those who love him in order to give them good things mungu anafanya kazi na wale wampendao ili awapatie mema yote praise jesus amen so god is the one who turns all these things to be good things for us Kwa to bring mungu good ndi, things to, to us kwae mungu ndiye anayebadilisha dhiki yetu yote hiyo na kuwa vitu vizuri kwetu praise jesus amen as long as we hold to this god's absolute will ili mradi tu tumekamata ili mpango kamilifu wa mungu and we are always filled with the holy spirit na, ki, na, na kila siku tunajazwa na roho mtakatifu then we should have this assurance that god is with us sasa tutakuwa na uhakika wa kwamba mungu yupo pamoja na mimi so we do not have to fear anything kwa hiyo hatutaogopa kitu chochote kile. So remnants. Kwa hiyo remnant, do not fear about the end of the world. Msiogope kuhusu mwisho wa ulimwengu. But le, rather, lakini let's go to the field and preach the gospel. Twendeni shamba la Bwana na kuhubiri injili. Not only the gospel, sio injili tu, the correct gospel. Injili sahihi. About Christ himself. Kuhusu Kristo mwenyewe. Who is Christ? Ambaye ni Kristo. Who is Christ? Like telling people who is Christ. Kuambia watu Kristo ni nani? Praise Jesus. Amen. And telling them that the solution is found in none other than Christ. Na kuambia watu kwamba suluhisho halipatikani popote pale isipokuwa kwa Kristo tu. Amen. Amen. This is God's absolute will. Hiyo ni mpango kamilifu wa Mungu. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Mungu awabariki. Let us pray. Tuombe. Father God we thank you. Mungu Baba tunakushukuru. We thank you because you have taught us that we should just hold on to your God uh, to your absolute will. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu umetufundisha kwamba tunapaswa kukamata mpango wako kamilifu. That is having the covenant of world evangelization. Na hiyo ni na hilo ni kuwa na agano la uinjilishaji wa dunia. But we should not just do this world evangelization na sio tu kufanya huo uinjilishaji wa dunia but we must tell the correct gospel to all the people na, eh, bali ni kuambia watu wote kuhusu injili kamili la ya Yesu Kristo pray so god we pray kwa mungu tunaomba that you fill us with your holy spirit kwamba utujaze kwa roho mtakatifu so that the, through this power of the holy spirit ili kwamba kupitia nguvu hizo za roho mtakatifu we can be the witnesses tunaweza kuwa mashahidi here in newland hapa Newland, Mosh, 
Moshi, Tanzania and Tanzania, Africa and the whole world. Africa na ulimwengu wote. We pray that you continue to help us. Tunaomba ili uendelee kutusaidia to have uh, this assurance. Tuweze kuwa na uhakika huo that you are with us. Kwamba wewe upo pamoja na sisi. And we should not fear anything. Na tunapaswa hatupaswi kuogopa chochote. So God help us every time. Hayo Mungu tusaidie kila wakati to have this confidence and go to the field kuwa na ujasiri huo na kwenda katika shamba la Bwana. I pray in Jesus name. Ninaomba kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. God bless you.